Is treated lumber toxic? It's a good question. There's a lot of controversy surrounding treated lumber these days. People say that it's toxic, that it's bad for our health and bad for the environment. Meanwhile, other people say that it's not toxic enough. Frankly, that it doesn't resist rot anymore, which is its only purpose. So, what's the truth of it all? In this video, we're going to talk about some of the tangible changes that have been made to lumber treatment over the last 20 years. And hopefully this will help sort out some of the fact from fiction. And that's coming up next on The Honest Carpenter Show. I've mentioned this topic before in my raised garden beds video, but that video didn't get watched too much, so I thought I should bring the topic up again for wider discussion. So here it goes. Up until the early 2000s, treated lumber did have a truly toxic component in it, arsenic. Chromated copper arsenate, or CCA, was the main chemical used to treat most of our lumber for residential construction. Technically, all the components in CCA can be found in the natural world. But in high concentrations, arsenic in particular can be very poisonous, even carcinogenic. By the late 90s, this began to be perceived as a more serious problem, given that so many of our domestic structures, from decks to park benches and playgrounds, are built from treated lumber. People congregate around these structures. They eat off of them. Children play on them. Manufacturers at the time insisted that the dangers of CCA toxicity were actually very low. After all, treated lumber had been in production for the last 60 years or more. There were few, if any, documented cases of people suffering from long-term arsenic exposure due to treated lumber contact, and that includes carpenters who built with the stuff all the time. But the EPA and other boards insisted that there had never been enough extensive research conducted on the matter, and they said that the presence of any arsenic was cause for concern, especially where it was being so widely exposed to the general public. So on January 1st, 2004, the EPA bowed to public sentiment and effectively banned the use of arsenic-based CCA lumber in the residential market while continuing to allow it in the commercial and industrial markets. They advocated instead for the use of two newer treatment chemicals, alkaline copper quaternary and copper azole. These were similar copper-based compounds that lacked arsenic and chromium. This made them less toxic, but it also made them less rot and fungus resistant. To increase rot resistance in these compounds, Manufacturers had to drastically amplify the amount of copper in their solution, from about 20% to 95%. This made the lumber itself way more expensive. Copper, as we all know, is an extremely pricey element. Manufacturers couldn't afford to pump that amount of micronized metal into every piece of lumber. So out of necessity, they created two tiers of lumber quality, ground contact and non-ground contact. Higher levels of copper quat and azol would be used for lumber that would remain in contact with the wet ground. Think fence posts and deck posts. However, lower levels would be used for lumber that did not sit in damp soil all day. Things like handrails, deck boards, much framing lumber. And as a quick info drop, if you're curious what chemicals are being used in your lumber and what the ground contact rating is, you can just check the lumber sticker on the end of the board. This will give you the facts about that particular product. I may do a whole video on these stickers at some point because they actually contain a lot of interesting information. But at any rate, this is the way that things have been for 16 years now. Copper quat and azole lumbers have been used for nearly all residential outdoor structures since then. Only decks built before 2004 possibly contain any arsenic. So just how toxic are these new treated lumbers? This actually gets a little bit harder to decipher. The EPA has insisted over the years that they pose little to no risk to people if they wear gloves and masks while working with it. They also say it poses no risk to ground soils. Yellowwood, which uses a brand of copper azole, states that their products are gentle enough to be used in raised garden beds. But the organic farming community has always cried foul. They insist that quat especially is used in commercial disinfectants and so should not be allowed in organic gardening. Also, copper is known to be toxic to marine life. So most newer treated lumbers are not approved for aquatic applications. You have to get into a whole other class of treated lumber there. But it seems that most university biologists agree that quat and nasal compounds pose little identifiable risk to soils or groundwater. There are even newer chemicals like MCQ, which don't leach at all because they use copper particles rather than fluids. If you're worried about your raised beds, you can line them with plastic sheets to prevent chemical transfer. Or you can build with organic lumbers like cedar or redwood instead and avoid the treatment debate altogether. For deck and playground applications, an oil-based penetrating sealant can be used to trap in the chemicals. But remember that those sealants have to be constantly reapplied, pretty much every year, which people tend to forget to do. More durable paints or opaque stains are not a good option though because they don't actually penetrate the wood and won't trap the chemicals. But the end result is that we seem to be in the clear on the issue of toxicity these days. 
our new products, whatever drawbacks they may have, are far less toxic than the arsenic, chromium chemicals we were using before. We're at less risk of poisoning ourselves with lumber. But the new debate that has been raging since 2004 is whether or not these chemicals are toxic enough to ward off pests and fungi. Carpenters and contractors building since the changeover seem to insist that treated lumber ain't what it used to be. Older CCA products typically boasted a 40-year lifespan if mitigating factors weren't too bad. In reality, I'd say you were lucky to get 20 to 25. But newer ACQCAB products seem to have a much shorter lifespan. Data isn't nearly finished rolling in on these things yet, and I'm not trying to draw any hard conclusions here. But based on personal experience and some of the grumblings I hear around the industry, modern treated lumber seems like it may only hold up for 8 to 12 years reliably. This is, of course, variable. Sealant finishes and more advanced flashing techniques can clearly extend these lifetimes. But we're seeing more and more treated lumber being hauled off to the dump as deck boards and posts succumb to rot in a much shorter time frame. What's the end result of this? I don't know. Construction methods have evolved for thousands of years and they'll continue to evolve. But this just seems to be where we stand as of the year 2020. Anyways, that's my take on it. What do you think? Have you had a deck prematurely rot out on you? Are you an organic gardener and you've had treated lumber toxify your soil? Please, let me hear about it down in the comments. I'm very eager to get a conversation going about this. Also, be sure to check us out at thehonestcarpenter.com, where we consult with homeowners nationwide about a range of construction issues. Consultations are very affordable, and we do everything online and by phone, so it's very easy to book and get your big questions answered by an independent contracting pro. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to check back in for more videos coming up soon. And please consider subscribing and hitting that little bell button to turn on notifications. That way you'll know the moment we post something. I'm Ethan James with TheHonestCarpenter.com. I'll see you next time.